So tell me, how effective are you at delegating tasks to your team? Could you delegate more than you do right now? Invariably, when I ask that question, the answer is yes. And the research shows that delegation done well has the potential to develop your team's skill set, increase resilience through cross-functional learning, it promotes better engagement, communication, and, well, it's a great mechanism for helping our people feel appreciated. Today I'll be sharing the most common reasons for not delegating and the steps you can take to overcome what's holding you back. And I'll also be sharing how you can take the guesswork out of how to delegate rather than dumping on your team accidentally. Just use our simple delegation framework. Let's get started, shall we? Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Project Joyful podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Tutte, your medical herbalist and high performance coach. So, hey, Project Joyful isn't just about being happy. It's about consciously creating a life you love. It's about remembering how to reconnect with your soul centered joy. You know, that joy that comes from doing what you love, from living on purpose, and from being in a life that allows you to experience deep joy moment by moment. So, hey, let's get started, shall we? Delegation is a key leadership skill. Done correctly, and you get to solve your immediate problem while investing time in others. Want to create more time in your day? Delegate. Want to develop your superstar? Delegate. Want to boost resilience in your team? Delegate. So what's getting in the way of you delegating more? According to Bloom Leadership, 79% of employees change jobs because they don't feel appreciated. Elevate your delegation skills and not only will you grow your talent, you create space to show them some love too. Great managers invest the time in getting to know their team. Not just their strengths and weaknesses, but how things are at home. What's their stress tell? What are they interested in? What would they prefer to not be involved in? Before delegating a task, really think about who in your team is the best match for the task that you have in mind. As well as considering their already demonstrated competencies, think about what your intended task could develop or stretch. And before we get into the elements that create an effective delegation experience, let's talk about the most common reasons for not delegating. When I ask this question of my clients, they tell me that it comes down to one of four things, sometimes more than one. First up, it's quicker to do the task myself. Secondly, it won't be done as well as I can do it. Or a variation on this is, it won't be what I want or how I like it. Three, well, I like doing that thing, so I want to keep doing it. Or four, they might not like it if I give them something else to do. This also shows up as, well, I don't really want to bother them. So first of all, a big shout out to all my perfectionists who are listening. I see you. So it won't be done as well as you could do it, hey? This is the perfect strategy for burnout and for hiding out. Will it be as good as if you'd done it yourself? Maybe. Maybe not. But it might be better. Would you feel threatened by it being better? It comes down to the clarity and the level of understanding you choose to impart to your delegatee. The key question is whether you'll be comfortable with what's produced. Is it good enough? And this comfort level can be trained for. When you're delegating a task, plan how you're going to delegate it first. The gold standard is to clearly define the outcome, provide context for why that outcome, and establish leading and lagging indicators so that you both have clarity on progress along the way. Provide examples of similar work. Be clear about how you want the work presented. When describing what needs to be done, use a mixture of visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning styles, leaning on their most prevalent learning style while you're doing that and get them to relay your requirements back to you to check for understanding. Now, once you've delegated the task, check in on them so that they have an easy open forum for clarification and feedback that's in real time. 
Think of the time invested as an upfront investment with less time needed over time as competence and confidence grows and they can begin to take on similar tasks without as much upfront training. Oh, and by the way, we're talking about competence and confidence in the art of delegation as well as in your delegatee's progress on the task. So why is perfectionism the perfect strategy for hiding out? Well, it's because you don't get to do the new uncomfortable needle moving stuff when you're snowed under with tasks your team could be doing. Sneaky, huh? So what about the I don't want to upset them by giving them more work reason for not delegating? It's hard to manage a team when you're a people pleaser. If you're managing a team, rest assured, there will always be times when you've annoyed somebody. Effective delegators are aware delegators. So before passing a task on, check in with your person. What else have they got going on? What are their priorities? Do they have work that could be delegated to somebody else? If so, how can you support them in setting up that delegation event so that it's successful? Remember that Bloom leadership statistic about 79% of employees who leave their job do so because they don't feel appreciated? Well, effective delegation breeds appreciation. Before delegating, reflect on what might be in it for them. What are their goals? Can this delegated task contribute to that? A chance to build their personal brand by presenting their work to the leadership team, for example. Spend some time talking with them about why you want them to pick up this task so that they feel chosen rather than dumped on and talk about how this task might benefit them and the wider team. And when they complete the task, celebrate them. So here's my framework for delegating effectively. Now, as part of your role as a manager, regularly catching up and checking in with your team is foundational because it helps you understand what they like, what they don't like, their goals, both professional and personal, how things are at home and what motivates them. Now take a look at your workload. What could be delegated and who would be the best served to receive that task? Now make a plan. What will you say to communicate why you chose them and what's in it for them? Then get really clear on the outcome that you're after and how you want that outcome presented. How do you want the task done? What are the steps? Or if you're not bothered by the how it's done, what's the criteria for a successful outcome? How would you like to be kept informed? How will you provide guidance and be available to answer questions? Are there any roadblocks to completing this piece of work? And what can you do to remove those roadblocks? And lastly, what are your lead lag indicators so you can both monitor progress along the way? Once you've planned it out, it's time for that conversation. Discuss all the aspects you've planned and adjust it where necessary based on their feedback. Then, when it's delegated, leave that baby to run its course. Check in as agreed, but don't be tempted to do a little bit to help out. That's called, I don't trust you, and it creates confusion. Effective delegation builds a team and feeds your trust barometer. It brings your team together and it fosters cross-functional learning. Not only does it allow you to focus on the areas where you can bring the most value, it creates tomorrow's leaders. So my invitation to you this week is to be the leader your team needs you to be. Delegate, don't dump. What can you delegate today? To whom and why to them? And then how can you support your chosen delegatee and set them up for success? And how will you celebrate their achievements? Just imagine what your team will be capable of and how they will be as a team if you decided to delegate with awareness. Sending you lots of love. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Can I ask you a favour? 
If our conversation spoke to you today, could you please take a moment to leave a five-star review? Your review will help people discover this podcast and together we can create a world where there's even more love and more laughter. And if you want to hear more from the Project Joyful podcast, just click the subscribe button. Bye for now.